Chairman, welcome to the Diversion Authority Finance Committee meeting. First order of business is a call of order. Uh, Don, could I have you do that, please? Mayor Dardis. Present. Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mr. Peterson. Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Here. Mr. Costin. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Mr. Montplaisir. Here. Mr. Redlinger. Here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Gehrig. Ms. Carlson. I'm sorry, Ms. McCall. A quorum is present. Thank you, Don. Mr. Chair, this is Executive Director Paulson. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to make a recommendation to remove item number six, sub bullet four, Aconex Oracle contract amendment. We did not receive a formal contract amendment from Oracle in enough time to review and have it on the agenda for today. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Is there any other additions or corrections that we'd like to make to the uh, agenda? Steen moves to approve the agenda. Thank you. Jacobs in second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number two is the approve the minutes of the previous meeting. They are attached and have been distributed. They are on page three. Steen moves to approve. Thank you, Mr. Steen. Is there a second? Second. This is Chuck Hendrickson. Thank you, Chuck, uh, Mr. Hendrickson. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from the previous meeting as distributed. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montplaisir. Yes. Mr. Rillinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is the approval of the bills. I would call on Mr. Costin, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, with, there is $12,587,881.27 in bills, and the uh, largest component of that is the Cass County Joint Water District. And if I counted the uh, transactions correctly on the detailed sheet, I think there was about 17 parcels of land. So that's a significant land acquisition spend this month. So uh, other than that, it's uh, normal reimbursements to our stakeholders. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Any questions for Mr. Costin? Hearing none, we'll move forward with uh, Don. Would you please call a roll is to approve the bills as presented by Mr. Costin. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montplaisir. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Item number four is the financial report. Again, I'll call on Mr. Costin. Uh, yes, with regard to the uh, report on the packet, page 15, the uh, current uh, 2020 spend uh, to date, year to date, is $65,966,978, lower right-hand corner. And then the accumulative spend is uh, $600,644,499. With regard to that, uh, if you continue on to the next page, 16, you can see our net position went down a little bit this month. Uh, it's at a balance of 73,141,443. Uh, 
And again, in the month of October, there were significant land acquisitions. So that's the reason that balance went down. Um, continuing on to page 17, uh, with regard to the revenue and expense, I'll focus on the expense on the bottom. It's 54% expended, uh, comfortably under budget, but you can see the 16.98 million was expended in the current month. So that, that again is a significant, significant spend last month. I did want to report that because of the change in the approval of the, uh, the uh, funding bill at the State Water Commission, our fiscal services staff have prepared a draft reimbursement of $36.1 million for past costs that go back to July of 17. Um, and those are allowable under the new cost share agreement. And we will be circulating that to the other agencies for their approval and hope to submit that and get that cleared by the end of the year. Uh, that's the goal at this point. So there will be significant resources coming forward from the State Water Commission. Other than that, the uh, standard reports are listed there. I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Are there any questions? Mr. Chair, this is Steen. Mr. Steen. I had a, a question, perhaps it's for Kent or if anyone there's from lands. I noticed the Southern Embankment and Association Infrastructure were quite a bit above budget to date, but 122 percent of budget. And I was just curious if that's um, activity issues or price issues with regard to uh, what's going on there. Yeah, I guess I would have to defer that to the program management consultant or the director. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, um, I think I know the answer, but I'll defer to Paul um for uh, the specifics on that so i um it's more on the number of parcels um we've been tracking pretty well uh per the estimate on the cost of the parcels um but we also have added in additional parcels for the drain 27 wetlands and some ad additional work there um on the SE1 reach. So um, it's it's more so the number of parcels rather than the cost of the parcels. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions for Mr. Costin? Do I have a motion please to approve the financial report? Steen moves to approve. Thank you, Mr. Steen. Is there a second please? This is Chuck, I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Henningsen. It's been moved and seconded to approve the financial report. Don, would you please call a roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Hendrickson. Aye. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montplaisir. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Item number five is the executive director's financial report. Mr. Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll quickly go through this and take any questions on specific budget line items, if there are any. Um, just reiterating uh, what Mr. Costin had mentioned, you know, overall cost to date, uh, the project's at $600 million in expenditures. Um, obviously, once again, our cost to date on our 2020 cash budget is running significantly below what we had expected to uh, spend. Um, and you can see a lion's share of the, uh, the expenditures are happening in uh, about six different columns. P3 support services, obviously we continue to uh, move in the direction of finalizing our P3 deal early next year. Uh, so we have a lot of effort going into that. Uh, and then the Fargo in-town and Fargo River Stage 37 projects, uh, we have about eight and a half million that has been expended year to date, uh, but we are running uh, under on those projects as well. Uh, and then our big one, obviously everyone knows uh, we've been working uh, through a lot of land deals this year. 
Um, you can see we still are below our budgeted amount um, by quite a bit, and that's related to uh, a, a, you know, a number of parcels that are going through the, uh, uh, the last resort eminent domain process. Uh, and so some of those will hit yet this year. Some of them will hit early in 2021. Um, but uh, that's, that's the reason we're running under budget there. Uh, and then the last one would be engineering, legal, and financial. Uh, that is tracking um, as expected uh, year to date as far as expenditures are concerned. Um, no, con no concern there. We should be somewhere near um, that mark uh, once uh, November and December numbers uh, come in and are tallied. Um, and so with that, I'll move just quickly through the level two detail. Um, again, management, legal, financial, procurement. That's where a majority of our work has gone into this year uh, with the exception of the lands. Um, you can see the I-29 grade raise project that uh, is, is gone over our anticipated 2020 budget some, but uh, still uh, well below the, uh, um, the budgeted amount for that project overall. Um, we are moving towards uh, bidding that project in January. Um, so that, that's uh, pretty exciting. That'll be uh, another uh, very large core project that will start construction uh, next year. Uh, and then we also have uh, some property uh, and house structure demo uh, package under work package 50 phase two. On the next sheet here, um, you can see we got some work happening in Oxbow Hicks and Baki still. Uh, that's a construction project uh, for this that, that occurred last summer. Um, some wrap up work to do there yet. Uh, and then the in-town uh, Fargo projects, um, you can see uh, listed. Um, and then uh, of course our lands acquisition and mitigation. Um, and you can see the line item numbers uh, coming through there. And uh, I think Commissioner Steen asked a good question. Um, you know, we'll see a few of those columns uh, run over a bit. You can see Southern Embankment and Associated Infrastructure, of course, as Commissioner Steen brought up, and Mitigation and Associated Infrastructure in Oxbow, Hicks, and Baki. Um, the one is related to a project that we bid out where costs came in higher than expected that was approved at the board last month. Uh, and then the other one, as, as uh, Mr. Barthel had mentioned, um, the, the number of parcels increased due to the wetland mitigation project, uh, but that was tallied towards this year. But overall, in the program budget, um, you know, we're still, uh, still no concerns and we're fitting within the program budget. Uh, just some engineering line items here um, to review. Uh, you can see they're all uh, running as anticipated for the most part or under budget. Um, and then, of course, the program uh, management support services uh, coming in this year as anticipated. So uh, with that, I'll open up any questions if there are any in regards to the line item budget. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Are there questions for Mr. Paulson? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number six, contracting actions. Mr. Paulson. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a number of zero cost uh, uh, contracting actions for the committee to consider today. The first one is a new uh, MSA for Beaver Creek Archaeology. Uh, we've used Beaver Creek Archaeology in the past um, for our archaeological services. Uh, their MSA uh, basically uh, um, expired, um, and so we were putting a new MSA in place with a new date. Uh, this, there, there are no task orders associated with this MSA. Uh, the second one is the Professional Services MSA Amendment, uh, and that's for CH2M Hill Jacobs. Uh, basically, that, uh, that amendment is uh, switching some key personnel uh, positions within the MSA. Uh, and then it's also adding um, uh, three additional months onto the uh, program office uh, lease compensation uh, reimbursement. 
Um, and that was uh, that was due to the MSA having a, a different end date for the program office uh, than what the program office lease was. So we're just putting those two in alignment um, and, uh, and and taking care of uh, some administrative things in the MSA uh, there. The third one is Task Order 4, Amendment 0, Insurance and Risk Assessment Services. This is for uh, a task order for Aon. Um, again, we're adding some scope in there and increasing the term of their amendment, but it's a, a zero budget uh, cost amendment. And then uh, the last one there was removed from the agenda. So I'll take any questions um, uh, related to these contracting um, recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Finance Committee, have any questions on these three items? Uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, for the contracting items, actions of uh, Beaver Creek, CH2M, as well as Aon. We'll do all three of them at once, if you would, please. Jacobson, I will make that a motion. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Is there a second? Uh, Redlinger, second. Thank you, Mr. Redlinger. Been moved and seconded to approve the contracting actions as presented by Mr. Paulson, items one, two, and three. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montplaisir. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is the executive director uh, report on the approved contract actions. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so these are contracting actions that fall within the authorities of the executive director to approve. Uh, and as the committee notes, anything under uh, $150,000 that is a task order amendment um, can be approved by the executive director. So this is reporting those actions out to the committee and I'll take any questions. The first one is task order 26 amendment seven uh, and that's for um, some additional hydraulic modeling necessary for the Corps of Engineers Southern Embankment projects. Uh, and really what this is is uh, um, the detailed design work that is going into the Southern Embankment um, projects uh, as well as the uh, the control structure projects. Uh, the Houston Moore Group is in the best position to provide this work, having uh, been working on the hydraulic model for the project for many years. Um, and so this was one that was requested by the Corps of Engineers and I, I did approve that request uh, and uh, you know prepared the, uh, the contract amendment uh, as you see fit here. That is the only one that I've had this month. Um, and so I, I'll take any questions that the committee might have concerning that, that approved action. Okay. Questions for Mr. Paulson? Right. Mr. Paulson, are you going to do anything with the uh, the, the patch and Messner or any of those? Yes, I'll uh, I'll get I'll report out on those, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the Cass County Joint Water Resource District did approve one task order amendment for additional appraisal services, as you as you see there. Uh, the the properties associated with that are are contained within your packet. Uh, and then on the next page, the MCC JPA. Uh, we'll also have a task order amendment on their agenda for tomorrow uh, for additional appraisal services uh, and those properties are uh, indicated in your packet in the actual task order as well. Uh, and so with that, there were no other um, task order uh, amendments um, presented this month. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Anybody from the Finance Committee have any question on these three items? Moving on to other business, number seven, uh, New Star Amendment and Resolution. Mr. Shockley. Mr. 
Mr. Chair, I do not see Mr. Shockley on the call at the moment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Paulson, would you address this, please? Y yes. Um, I will attempt to, and if there's any questions, um, I'll take those, and we may have to get back to you uh, if Mr. Shockley doesn't hop on the line. Uh, this is a, an amendment to the agreement for the New Star uh, pipeline uh, relocation. Um, this work is, is necessary. The pipeline crosses the diversion channel. Um, and Paul, maybe you can help me out with, uh, you know, the exact language that changed in the uh, the contract agreement with New Star. Um, this is basically uh, the MOU and agreement was originally approved with an estimate of uh, four four hundred thousand uh, dollars, but then we have gotten a refined estimate that changes the agreement um, to the four hundred and fifty nine thousand dollar figure that you see in the packet. So it's it's basically an adjustment to the cost now that we have a more refined cost and a better idea of exactly what it's going to take to do that. So this is just an update to the ag agreement that was originally passed. Um, and so it was just a, a revision in the cost. Thanks, Paul. Are there any questions? This is an actionable item. Uh, to note to the Finance Committee, uh, the change is uh, approximately $59,000 from the original estimate. Is there a motion, please? This is Chuck. I'll send that motion. Thank you, Mr. Hendrickson. Is there a second, please? Steenel, second. Peterson, second. Commissioner Peterson, second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the New Star Amendment and resolution as presented today. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Aye. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montplaisir. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. The next order of business is the State Water Commission agreements for cost share reimbursement. There is an attachment, Mr. Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I reported out last month to the Finance Committee that uh, we did receive um, a, approval and uh, we were going to be receiving the cost share agreement from the state water commission for an additional 44 million dollars um, this this money was appropriated to us in the last legislative session um, and so this is the agreement before you for us to access those dollars as you can see here it is a 50 percent um, actual eligible cost reimbursement um, similar to our other agreements uh, this was reviewed by uh, Mr. Shockley and uh, and myself, and uh, we recommend approval of the agreement. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Questions for Mr. Paulson? The chair to entertain a motion. Jacobson so moves. Thank you, Mahoney Mr. Jacobson. I'm sorry, who was second? Mahoney second. Thank you, Mayor. Been moved and seconded to approve the State Water Commission agreements for cost share reimbursement as presented. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Aye. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montplaisir. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. 
Next order of business is the Land Acquisition Directive. Mr. Dodds. Good afternoon, Chairman, committee members. In your packet, you see two separate land acquisition directives. The first one is for the upstream mitigation area structures in North Dakota. Uh, as you may know, we did get the FEMA approval of the conditional letter of map revision, and we have state permit approval of the mitigation zones. And with that information, we know exactly which structures are in the mitigation zones and which are not. And so with that information, we have uh, processed a, a cost estimate for those impacted structures. This land acquisition directive is roughly $35 million for the um, known structures that are in the upstream mitigation area in North Dakota. Uh, the third page of that LAD does have a map showing the location of those, and you can see them itemized out uh, on the on pages one and two. Um, these land acquisition directives uh, are presented to the Finance Committee for awareness and approval, and if you do approve, then we would pass this on to the Cass County Joint Board, uh, which is their authorization to proceed with these acquisitions. I would just note that uh, some of these structures that are on the fringe of the impact area may be in a situation where they're not going to be a buyout, um, but we don't know that until we start working directly with the property owner and going through uh, you know, some of the unique circumstances. Uh, from a budgeting standpoint, we are recommending and we have budgeted these as a buyout. Um, if there's some other option that comes up, we'll uh, gladly explore that as well. Happy to stand for questions. Otherwise, we would ask for approval unless you'd like me to cover the Minnesota one before that. We'll do them one at a time. Thank you, Mr. Dodds. Are there questions for Mr. Dodds on the uh, land acquisition directive for North Dakota? A motion, please. So moved. Mahoney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Mahoney. Is there a second, please? Peterson, second. Thank you, Commissioner Peterson. It's been moved and seconded to approve the land acquisition directive for North Dakota. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Aye. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Hendrickson? Aye. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Costin? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Bont Pleasure? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Steen? Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is the Land Acquisition Director for Minnesota, Mr. Dodd. Yes, thank you, Chair and Committee members. Also in your packet is the LAD for Upstream Structures in Minnesota. Very similar story. You see the list of the parcels, the parcel type, the property owner. Uh, we have budgeted approximately $15 million for these structures. A map is attached to the LAD. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, we would ask for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Dodds. Questions for Mr. Dodds? Move to approve. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Is there a second, please? Ms. Chuck, I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Hendrickson. It's been moved and seconded to approve the Land Acquisition Directive for Minnesota. Don, would you please call a roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Aye. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Caston. Yes. Ms. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Montpelier. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is the property acquisition status report. Mr. Dodds. Thank you, Chairman, committee members. Um, I would draw your attention to just a few items in this status report. I hope most of you are familiar with this. Uh, the next page 
if whoever's running the screen there is an overall status map. Um, I would point out a couple of things on this page. First off, we have acquired 419 parcels as the date of this report. Um, there have been a few acquired since then, so we are continuing to make slow and steady progress. Um, the other thing I guess I wanted to point out is we have been progressing through the statutory processes in North Dakota. And uh, what that means is when we haven't reached agreement with certain property owners, we're asking the county commission for approval to use last resort eminent domain. Uh, this report in front of you, you can see there's 13 parcels in that red color. Um, by the time we have this report prepared next month, I'm anticipating uh, more of a Christmas colored map. A lot of the blues will be converted into a red color uh, where we have um, been continuing to negotiate and will, and will continue to negotiate, but we will likely have made uh, a bunch of the deposits for the last resort eminent domain process within the next several weeks. Um, so we just wanted to point that out. Um, the rest of the report, I guess, is consistent and drills into more details that uh, you might be familiar with. I, I guess uh, I'd pause and ask if there's any questions. Otherwise, just wanted to point out those high points. Thank you, Mr. Dodds. Any questions for Mr. Dodds? All right. Does anyone else have anything else that you'd like to bring forward this evening? Our next meeting will be December 16th. I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and I hope you stay safe and healthy. You stand adjourned. Thank you.